Hi guys, it's Shelly here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I want to share with you my top coloring supplies of 2023. They're going to be a top 10. However, I'm going to split them in two. So the so five of my top 10 will be coloring supplies that I've actually enjoyed for a long time and that still made it to my favorites of 2023. And my second five will be supplies that I've acquired this year, maybe stuff I've bought myself or that have been sent to me for review and I've absolutely fell in love with. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd share it as a top 10 and just split it that way. So the first five that I'm going to share with you, as you can see, will be supplies that I've had for a while and that are my all-time favourites. They're favourites that have been with me for a while now and stuff that I'm still really enjoying. Um, I am very picky about products that I buy. Um, I don't buy that many uh, supplies. I do buy books, yes, but supplies I do tend to keep it limited. I have acquired a few new things this year, especially for reviews um, that I've actually enjoyed using, but I do tend to um, be very picky about reviews as well. So about products that are going to be sent to me, um, things that I know I'm going to enjoy using or stuff I haven't tried and would love to try. Um, so yeah, I'm very picky about my supplies, um, which is why you guys have always seen my Albrecht Euro pencils on this channel because I started with them in back in 2015 and they're still my absolute favorite pencils. Um, but yeah, let's just get started and um, I'll share with you my top 10. First, the top five all-time favorites and then the next five will be new supplies that I've um, fell, fallen in love with this year. All right, so they're not going to be in order, but definitely this is basically number one is my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils. It's the 120 set and I've had this for a long time. You can see the box is now wearing off. I, use, I do keep my pencils in the box. They're just easy for me to use um, with my setup. Um, I just literally leave them in the box and I just sort of lay them out and I know where my pencils are now. Um, I've got used to this set. I know these pencils inside out. I know where all my pencils are. So it's easy for me to just sort of um, you know flip between the trays and it's it's not as flimsy these trays i've had this particular set since 2019 i think so um they've, they've held up these little elastics have held up as well um so it works for me right now um so yeah as if you guys don't know if you've not come across them which if you've watched my channel you will have come across them but the faber castell albrecht Dura pencils are watercolor pencils and the reason I love them so much is, yes, the range of colors is absolutely beautiful. And I love them. I love the fact that they're so versatile. I can use them as watercolor pencils. I can use them dry. And that's the main thing. I know that if I had to go anywhere, if I needed to grab a good set of pencils, these pencils would be the ones that would go with me. I can do backgrounds with them. I can do my main um, illustrations with them. So the main line art with them. So basically, they're so versatile that I could finish a whole page just using my Arbor Dura pencils and be satisfied with the result. Yes, we do need the embellishments at the end. I do use like using embellishments, but say I was limited. If I had to pick just one supply, this one set of pencils would be perfect for me to just carry on with my hobby and not necessarily need anything else. Everything else does add a little bit extra to the pages, but if I didn't have that choice, these would be perfect for me to carry on with my hobby. Um, so I absolutely love them. You can see how tiny these are. I do tend to use them till they're literally absolute little stumps. As long as I can continue sharpening them, um, I continue using them. So yeah, I know they're not a beautiful set of pencils with all pencils, you know, at a perfect um, unused length, but um, hopefully it shows how much I actually love them. They work in, basically I use them for all my coloring. So every single page, every book, no matter what the paper is, whether it's Amazon quality paper, whether it's amazing quality paper, I use my Arbrecht Dura pencils. And the fact that you can activate them just helps with, activate them with water helps a lot. So certain books, um, like the Amazon quality books where blending takes a little bit longer, if you activate it with water, very little water is needed to dissolve these pencils, which is why I love them. 
um, you don't need to use so much water so even with the thin papers it works pretty well so it helps putting down a base and then you can color over so having that as an option really helps in like thin paper it helps in paper that's really really smooth um because then once you've laid down a base and activated it water you water you give a little bit of roughness to the page and you can start laying down pencils over the top so i've found that i can use them in pretty much every book that i own at least um i've never needed to go and look for other pencils i've managed to make it work with just these pencils which is why they'll always be my top number one supply ever um i like that you can buy them in at stock pencils as well um so you can buy if you run out of pencil just buy them so all these tiny tiny pencils that i have there i already have the stock available i'm ready to go um because i know i get through these pencils really fast and that's the other thing the only reason i get through them fast they they actually last a long time so they don't wear down that much you don't have to keep sharpening them the pencil um the pencil lead does last a while they don't wear down so much um but because I predominantly use just these pencils most of the time, I use them up a lot. Um, so I like that I can get stock pencils and the stock pencils are only £1.80 um, here in the UK, like from Jackson's Art, for example. And when Jackson's Art is doing a deal, they go down to £1.50 or £1.60. Now, there are other pencils out there, watercolour pencils out there, which are pretty meant to be pretty good, like Karen Dash Supercolour. Um, which these get compared to a lot. Um, I might try it one day. I don't think I would ever buy that set because this works perfectly for me. I don't need two watercolour pencil sets. Um, the only thing with the Karen Dash would be that each pencil is £2.50 when you want to restock. So um, I feel that these, for, for, for the quality that you're getting, the price of the stock pencils and to restock them, is so much cheaper than a lot of the other artist quality pencils out there um and that's why i think it's so worth it that once you've yeah splurged that on your first buy of the entire set unless you build up with stock pencils but if you do get the entire set like i did um when you're restocking it's a lot cheaper too than a lot of other brands out there which is amazing for this quality but yeah i i probably shouldn't go on too much about them you guys already know i love them and I always will. Um, but like I said, I can do everything with these pencils. I really don't need anything else. Although this year I have ended up buying some other stuff. Um, two sets of pencils, which I, um, yeah, which I've added to the collection. But for a long time, it was just these. All right. And I still keep going to these pencils as my first choice. So Faber-Castell, Albert Dura pencils, watercolour pencils, perfect for, yes, watercolour, using them as watercolour pencils or as dry pencils as well. Um, so my number one all-time favourite. All right, <laughs> that was really long just for the pencils, but I think they are pencils that are worth um, this. They're, they're so worth it. It's so, it's it definitely, um, yeah, something I have to keep going on about. All right, my next supply Top, the top five that I've been enjoying for a while, not just stuff I bought this year, is my Tuli Art paint pens. And I absolutely love these pen, paint pens. Um, I think they work great. Sorry, I've not got, have I got all the sets? I've got pretty much all the sets other than the greys. And there are some new ones that come out, like the jewel tones, which are really nice. They're really intense colours, which I really like. Um, I would say you don't need all the sets unless you use paint pens a lot um i like to use paint pens the main thing is for embellishments at the end of my page so covering up black lines creating highlights um so those are the main things i use it for however i have used it as basing as well on a lot of pages where i may have small elements and i want to cover up the black lines so for example flowers which are quite small i will color the i will um, fill in the line art of the flower for example with my paint pen and then go over and add a bit of depth to it with my pencils and these work beautifully for that and I've done a video on how to use um, paint pens for coloring on the hopefully if I remember I'll try and link it in the description box below so that you can get more use out of the paint pens because yes as colorists 
we tend to acquire so many things like paint pens and other supplies and then we just we we use it very limited oops sorry about that that was my paperweight um we use it as just you know very limited um so i think a good idea other than using it for your paint pages if you're someone who does um color by numbers you can use it for that as well obviously if you're into other crafts like rock painting or things like that you can use it for that as well um so they're beautiful beautiful pens um they're very opaque i would say if you didn't want to get all the colors the main sets that you should get if you want it for coloring which really helps is the earth and skin tone they're really good colors uh, for highlights and for covering up black lines so those are really good colors and the pastel colors because yes like i said i would use it a lot for highlights um so those are the pastel colors if i can fit it in there we go yeah and there and then so those are perfect for basing as well as for um creating your highlights and for covering up black lines so pastels are always a good idea for ba for any supply so for example if you're going to use like alcohol markers or um water-based markers or anything for a base pastels are always the way to go um you should always go for a lighter color and then add intensity with you know your darker colors so having pastels is a really good idea and i think the earth tones earth and skin tones are quite nice as well so the, those are two sets i would definitely recommend if you are interested in trying out uh, paint pens but other than that i've got yeah quite a few sets so i've got the earth and skin tone the pastels the yellows and browns um the reds and pinks i think yeah and then the greens and the blue and purples and i don't have the grays yet I, I haven't found the need to get them yet so eventually maybe and i haven't tried their black and white because i have some other paint pens black and white ones which i want to use up first before i buy more black and white paint pens um so yeah i haven't tried their white but i i'd be surprised if they're not good as good as these and as opaque as these um the only thing i do recommend is a lot of people you know complain that paint pens get clogged these are plastic tips um so if i show you this one for example it is a plastic tip and it will get clogged up if you don't rinse them after use so what i do is you want i use them and then i'll go in um once i finish my coloring session i'll go in um rinse them out with water i take out the nib and i clean it under running water and pop it back in um so that way if there's any paint um left in the nib it's washed out so it's unlikely to then dry up and clog up the nib um obviously any paint that's exposed to air you would want it to dry so for example when you use this on paper you want it to dry but then you should realize as well that um yeah it's going to dry up in the nib and it will block up so for any other paint pens not just tuli art if there are nibs that can be removed and rinsed out the plastic ones especially i would recommend that obviously brush tips and things like that are different um but yeah the those kind of nibs would need to be rinsed out so i do tend to do that so that they don't get clogged up and i can continue using them um and yeah and each set comes with extra nibs anyways i haven't needed to use any of these tips yet because i do tend to clean them out after use but i know i have extras a lot of extras if necessary but tulia paint pens another favorite of mine for a long time now um yeah for basing for highlights for covering up black lines they are beautiful and they have so many colors available all right then my next favorite supply oh sorry with the tuli art i would say that at the moment for my white paint pen i tend to use posca 1m in white um so that's the nib and i just had a few things that just flaked off there <laughs> but yeah for a white paint pen this is the one i tend to use and then all my others are tuli art paint pens okay then my next set is or my next coloring supply is um i would say i'm trying to decide which one goes next but i think it's going to be these because i've used these for a lot longer and i still use them and i absolutely love them is my tombow dual brush pens guys so there we go so i do have the full set i've forgotten how many they are is it 108 um so it's, it comes in a set like you know in a little container 
um, and yeah I tend to use these a lot actually so at first when I first started using this I I would pick out mainly the pastels so again if you weren't going to get the full set if you are someone who would want water-based markers these are water-based markers um, I would choose at least the pastel sets for basing I went for water-based markers as my first choice of markers rather than alcohol markers because I um, had mainly double-sided books. Um, I had very limited single-page si single -paged books, which, you know, um, you mainly get in books such as Amazon Quality and things like that. So because of that, I didn't want anything that would seep through and water-based markers don't. And that's why I went for these. And I know there's so many water-based markers out there. I did my research and I know these are really good. I know they're pricey, yes, but um, I do my research and then I stick to that set of um, supplies for, for forever, basically. I don't have any other water-based markers. This is what I use that I've been using for a while. At first I used to use it mainly just with the pastel colors for basing. But now I've started adding shading as well. So even though they don't bl blend that great on normal paper, you need to have good marker paper for water-based markers to blend and not to be streaky. You'll always find them streaky. So I don't use them for big areas like backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, I do tend to base with a pastel or a light color. And then I add a bit of shading with some of the darker tones now, which I didn't do at the beginning, but I do now. And then I go over with my pencils and it just helps with, um, I'm gonna say with the speed of coloring. However, I'm still a slow colorist. Um, but yeah, I think it does help speed up your coloring, just laying down that base color. Um, but also it gives a nice effect to your, to your pages because when you combine a base of a different you know brand or product um so like the markers for example it changes the color of the pencil that you're using over the top it does give it a bit of a difference so it's nice to sometimes see that slight difference in your coloring or the colors that turn out also using these markers makes my coloring really vibrant so i do love bold bright colors and um using the tom Bodio brush pens as a base really helps just give that vibrancy that I like and um so yeah I really really like using the Tombow dual brush pens um and if you've not seen them before they do have numbers you can buy them as stock so when you run out of one pen you can replace it I think I've replaced three only so it was a black because once at the beginning of my coloring or quite early in my coloring I used it for a background so it used got used up quite a lot in a Hannah Carlson book one of her older books so you can imagine how big the page was but yeah so I used a Tom Bojo brush pen for that so I, the black one so I replaced that and then there's one green that I use a lot um I think it's this one 131 for basing I was using that a lot in the beginning so I needed to replace that one and I think I think that's it maybe a yellow if I'm not mistaken this really light yellow the 090 um but that's it the rest are still the same I've had these for maybe three years now more than just over three years three and a half years and um, they're still working for me and I love them and in certain books or certain styles of coloring it really helps um, in fact let me bring you a page I just did recently and someone had commented about how vibrant the page is and it's because I use these just give me one second okay so this is the book here the Briar coloring book um, and the page I did uh, it's taken me a long time to actually get myself started in this book but this is a page I did and I don't know if you can see it's actually quite intense the colors I used um Tombow jewel brush pens pretty much for basing all of everything on this page but like I said unlike when I first started using um water-based markers for basing I would just use one color and base it and then go over with my pencils now especially on good paper I tend to put a base of a light color and put in my shadows um, with a really dark color. So here I put in really dark greens into my shadows. I put shadows and, you know, um, colors into my branches and just added other colors um, to sort of lay down a nice foundation basically and 
give some interest to the page and then I went over with the pencil dry. Even here I've used greens and I've used the pink and I've used really dark green and then just gone over with the pencils a little bit um, to just perfect my highlights and shadows and uh, yeah it gives a very intense colour. Um, I don't like just a marker finish so I'll always go over with the pencils um, over the top but um, yeah. I just wanted to show you that so it it really gives good results to your pages and i can just show you if you want um to see this one really um thin copy paper but these are the colors that um by the way i've got a new um folder for my swatches which i really like because it's 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 uh ring bound but the little plastic wallets just sort of pull off. So if I'm using a particular supply, I can just pull off that one. I don't have to have the whole folder in front of me. And I really like that and I can reorganize. I don't like using books because I can't reorganize um, the layout. So if I want to put something in front of something else, I can I can re reorganize it basically. But these are the colors you get with the full set of Tom Bojo brush pens. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. So really good colours, you get some really nice pastels, really nice dark colours and I'm starting to use, before I didn't use the dark colours that much but I am starting to use them quite a lot um, now which uh, yeah, so it, I'm just falling in love with my Tombos even more now. Alright, so that was my supply, I can't even remember now, number three, that was supply number three, all time favourites, okay? It's got a nice lid, so it's so nice and easy to store away. All right, number four, I would say, is my Neo Color Twos. I love these auto soluble crayons. Um, for those of you who haven't come across it, I think this is a full set. Is it 80, 80 something, 84? So I have got the full set, but I started with a very small stock set um of them to try them out before in case um i put it in this case but um yeah i had bought these a very long time ago 2015 i really didn't like them they didn't work well for me but anyways um so i've got these were the stock ones i had bought they still lasted um but i tried them out first made sure i really liked them before i bothered buying any more and that's what I tend to do with my supplies. I don't just go out and buy um, the whole supply before trying them out. So this is the full set and I absolutely love them. I am using them a lot for backgrounds, especially in my mythographic books. I really enjoy them in mythographics um, and in other books as well. I like using them, yeah, mainly for backgrounds, but I've started using them for basing as well. Um, so another supply, another different brand, different colours to use underneath my pencils to just give a little bit of a different effect to the colours that I use over the top with my pencils. Um, again, you can buy them as stock. Again, I always tend to buy supplies that I can buy as stock pencils or crayons or pens because long term, it just makes sense to me because you use up certain colours more than others. Uh, or quicker than others and you don't need to replace the entire set and so I like the idea of having supplies that I can just buy that one you know pen pencil crayon that runs out um, so yeah you can buy them as stock you have the names um, and numbers on them so the number is quite small just there and um, they are beautiful colors again I can show you I have my swatch swatches here don't I so this is the swatches I have for the Neo Color 2s. Beautiful colors. You have some pastels, you have some darker ones. They're lovely for backgrounds. Um, so I really, really like them. I do tend to use them a lot, especially on good paper. I don't, I don't think I've tried them on Amazon quality paper. So I can't comment on that. Um, but when you use them on good paper, they're a beautiful um, supply to have. But I think there are other brands out there now, so you could always try other brands. But I got these first, and yeah, I don't need to get any other soluble uh, crayons, so that's why I don't bother buying any other brands to try out. Um, but that's the Karen Dash Neo Color 2s. Beautiful option for basing and 
definitely for backgrounds and you get such bold intense colors with them um, but then they have some of the pastel tones which are really nice as well that you can use um, for yeah for basing and things like that all right so my last all-time favorite is it's a very small supply Winsor & Newton white ink I really really like this I tend to use it a lot which is why I'm sharing it with you guys I use it for covering up black lines in areas I want to cover up so for example Hannah Carlson um, portraits the hair she does have quite a few um, lines in the hair so I I like to use it for things like that just cover it up and then you can color over it over it really well i use it for covering up the hidden objects in the older mythographics which had the hidden objects i love my mythographics even the ones which have the hidden objects i'm not going to get rid of them just because of the hidden objects or not coloring them because of that but i do tend to most of the time cover up the hidden objects so i do that with my Windsor and newton white ink i like to give some highlights with these and I love doing my little sprinkling splash effect on pages with my Windsor & Newton white ink. And so, yeah, this is definitely a favourite for me. Um, so that's my top five all-time favourites or, or things that I tend to use a lot. And um, yeah, I'm sure if you guys have been following my channel, you will have seen all of these supplies used. Um, so you'll know that they are definitely my favourites. Now, I'm going to go on to share with you my top five, um, to make up the top 10, my top five supplies that I've acquired in 2023, so they're new to me this year, um, that I actually really love. So, the first thing I want to share with you is my sharpener. A lot of people have asked me about sharpening and what I use, especially for the Arbic Durers, because they're a bit wider than other pencils. Um, so I tend to use, or I bought this one this year, so an electric sharpener, my first electric sharpener, it's 10 win. This one I bought myself, I just looked at reviews and just got it. And I and it said that it takes pencil six to 12 millimeters. So I knew that my Arbic Durers will work and it gives such a brilliant point to my Arbic Dura pencils. Um, so I absolutely love this. And unfortunately, it's not a battery operated one, although I don't mind that it's not battery operated. I don't want to keep changing the batteries. And I usually tend to color at my desk. So it is um, uh, wired. So if you're looking for something that's not wired, I'm sure there are lots of other options out there. Um, I don't know, is it Athmat or something that has battery operated? So you can always look for a sharpener that is battery operated. However, what I do want to mention is, again, this year, usually I buy the KUM, K-U-M, uh, German brand of um, small silver sharpeners. But this year I just decided mine had sort of worn off and I needed a good handheld sharpener when my pencils get really really small i can't use it in the electric sharpener after a certain point and i got the stedler um and i've not tried this one before but it just says stedler graphite and it came in a pack of two i'm still using my first one it hasn't worn off yet um it's a brilliant sharpener it's worked so so well i know it's such a small simple product but a supply but it is perfect and i think sharpeners are really important when it comes to coloring because if you have a bad sharpener um you will eat through your pencils really fast and when you have good quality pencils or you have artist quality quality pencils pencils you might have spent so much on um you don't want to see them keep breaking when you're sharpening because it, it definitely as the pencil breaks my heart breaks when i see that happen and that used to happen for me a lot i used to use different um brands i used the faber castell brand which, um, do I have it here? Yeah, I thought this, because it's Faber-Castell, it would, it would work well for me, but it didn't. Um, so I was surprised, um, but I do use this. It has a, might be a bit messy. It has a wide hole there. So I tend to use that for my um, Neo Color 2s to sharpen them, <clears throat> but I don't use them for pencils because they were breaking my pencils quite a lot. Um, so yeah it's really important get yourself a good set of sharpeners now i did used to use the dial 133 before i got this electric sharpener 
but this has definitely overtaken the Dahl 133. I prefer that, and I definitely at the moment prefer my little tiny sharpener to my Dahl 133. So these are the two sharpeners I use, and I barely ever get, I should touch wood, barely get any breakages with my pencils, and it, it's brilliant. Um, it's quick, especially for my color alongs, things like that, for prepping, it's really quick. And for those of you who might have, you know, um, wrist or, um, you know, problems with your hands, it's really easy to use, but it only takes the pencil to a certain point. Um, I don't have my Arbrick drawers. I just have a couple of stock. No, these are not the same. Let me just show you. Just in case you were interested, because a lot of people um, do ask me about what sharpeners I use, and it is really important to get good sharpeners. So if I show you my Arbrick drawer pencils, so I've not tested on my other pencils yet, so I don't know how long up to what point there will be sharpening. But on the Albrecht Jura pencils, if you look at this side of the pencil, so you have your name on that side, and on this side you have the um, the, the brand and everything written, Faber-Castell. So up until this little symbol here, yeah, just past that symbol, you can sharpen to that point from, from when it's a new pencil all the way to that point using the electric sharpener. However, once the pencil is that sort of length there, um, then, it doesn't fit in the electric sharpener. You can't hold it um, properly to sort of um, let it sharpen. So for example, if I took a smaller pencil like that one and put it in there, it's not only going to get to the right depth, it's just going to disappear into the pencil. So that is when I start using. Um, so when I get to that symbol there is when I start using my Stedler um, handheld pencil and it gives such a nice sharp point. Um, so yeah. These are what I recommend at the moment, especially for the Albert Jurors. They work both work well for the uh, width of the Albert Jurors, gives a really nice sharp point, and um, you don't get breakages, or I haven't yet. All right, so these are sharpeners I bought this year, 2023, and I absolutely love them, and I cannot do without them. If I was traveling, I wouldn't take this, it's not battery operated, that's probably why, and it's massive. I would just take this and I would be happy with this one Stedler little sharpener going back to basics. Um, but it's perfect. All right. Then the next thing I want to share um, as a new supply of 2023. Um, again, it's a small item first. So this is number two, not, not an order, but this is Frisk Mask Away. If you guys have watched my videos, Sorry, I don't mean to make that noise. Um, if you guys have watched my videos on how I use distressings for backgrounds, I don't tend to, I haven't got the skill yet to have them going over the line art and creating a base and then using my pencils over the top. So Kinney Kitty um, is brilliant at that. She does uh, amazing work with distressing, but I don't know how to do that yet. So I tend to cover up my line art with drawing gum, um, which is, do I have it here? Okay, I can't find it right now. Sorry, guys. Um, but I use drawing gum to cover up the line art. Um, and then I use my distressing. And then we have to remove the drawing gum. Um, so basically, it covers up the areas that you don't want the distressing to go on. Usually people use it for watercolour painting. Um, so you can use it with watercolour paints. You can use it with... Um, distressing i'm just trying to think what else not with um soft pastels i don't think it would work with that but um yeah once you've used it you use this before i used to you just use my finger which was absolutely fine but it does get tiring um to do it that way and when you use this mask away you literally just rub off the drawing gum and it comes off easily now i We'll try and remember to put a link in the description box below for a video I did, I think this autumn in 2023, um, in Melpomene Chatsi Panagitu's Enchanted Earth for a background with Distress Ink. And I used the, used the drawing gum and I used the mask away, I think, uh, to remove it. Um, so hopefully if I remember, I'll put that in the description box below. But I really like this. It has, it's a game changer for me. I, I feel like I was really getting tired when I was using it using my fingers to rub off the drawing gum. So that works really well. Um, so that's another supply I got this year or tried out this year that I like. And yeah, it's changed the way I do my distress inks, which is brilliant. All right, a bit more interesting now. 
a new supply that I got in 2023. Now this I did not buy myself. This was sent to me by Ohuhu and it's alcohol markers, the Ohuhu Honolulu series. And it's the 96 pastel colors. Again, like I said, it's amazing to have pastel colors, especially for supplies that you use for basing. And um, so these are the pastel colors of the um, Honolulu series of Ohuhu, and I absolutely love them. I've not used alcohol markers before this year. Um, so again, it's pretty amazing trying out this new product. I know a lot of you probably already have alcohol markers, but like I said, I didn't have that many single-sided books, but there are certain artists which I enjoy or like the art of, which are only doing Amazon quality books. Um, and so I think these are going to come in handy or even for like things like books, like the coloring heaven, um, coloring heaven, creative haven um what else um certain good quality books as well now have single sided pages as well so um can use them in that um but yeah so this is the ohuhu um pastel colors it has a brush tip which is what i tend to use and i really like it for basing and it also has a broad tip which i haven't yet used um again ohuhu now has the pens as stock pens they didn't before which is probably why i never bothered to try them um if i knew they had stock pens i would have bought a few stock and i would have used tried to try them out and i would have known earlier that i liked the alcohol marker idea um but it's only this year i think that they've started doing stock um so you can buy them as stock pens so if you run out of one you can get access to another one but they also do refills as well um so that is amazing and they also have um replacement nibs available and things like that so it's just perfect now and that's why i agreed to um yeah receive this product and try it out i was like yes because if i do love them i want to be able to buy the single items um i'm quite picky that way sorry guys um but yeah really beautiful colors i'll show you the swatch do i have them they also sent me um other alcohol markers but i think these are probably my favorite because they're pastel colors um but these are the colors there i don't like just an a marker finish so i'll always use pencils over the top which is why i think that um pastels are perfect for that um it's sort of you sort of work with the base as being the lightest color and then add color with your pencils to give the darker tones and have these as highlights which is why it's good to have um, really like colors so I absolutely love these colors I have been using alcohol markers I'm trying to think if there is any book I can think of um, I can't think of anything off, out, off the top of my head to show you but again they give a similar effect to my water-based Tombow Jewel brush pens but um, obviously they're not as streaky because they're alcohol they blend better if you're going to do shading with them you can use them for larger areas so with um, books such as the amazon quality books where you don't know what to do with the backgrounds because they're not that many supplies that work well on that paper these can work well with that paper um and so you can use it for the backgrounds and for basing and even a marker finish if you wanted but you might need some darker tones for the marker finish if you're going to add shadowing um or sh shadows and highlights um but yeah for me these are perfect for basing sorry just give me one second sorry that was the door um yeah so alcohol markers first time i've tried them this year in 2023 absolutely fell in love with them definitely a favorite for my single-sided books um i would happily use my tombow jewel brush pens for my single-sided books as well but um they, because they're not alcohol, they don't always work on every paper very well, especially, you know, the ones which will just soak up the, the colour. Um, and you can't use the water-based markers for, like, backgrounds and stuff. Like I said, they are um, they, they are streaky compared to alcohol markers. And so it's really handy having alcohol markers. So for books like my RJ Hampson, I don't have that many of his books, but RJ Hampson books because his art is quite nice. Nice little town books by Tatiana Bogema. Um, so I am glad to have tried the alcohol markers and I'm so glad they worked for me. Um, I used it in Creative Haven as well and I really enjoyed it. 
I enjoyed it more on that paper than I did on, on Amazon quality paper. But yeah, paper it paper is important, guys. All right. So that was um, a new favorite for 2023 that I got this year. Then the next thing. So that's the only one that was sent to me that I would say made it to my favorites. But um, I got this set of pencils this year. I bought it myself, um, Derwent Ink Tense, the 100 set. I never tried, actually I did. I had one um, stock pencil of Derwent Ink Tense to try out before I decided to buy it. This was given free in Cass Art in an art store here in the UK. Sometimes at checkout, they sort of give you a little gift. So I must have gone to top up all my Halbrook Dura pencils. And I said, have you tried Derwent Ink Tense? And I said, no. And they're like, here you go. Try this one out. So I tried it out and I absolutely loved it. Um, and so I got the set, especially after all of the colorists started sharing on Instagram, on YouTube, that they had added new colors because the first set was only 72. I like to have big sets. I like to have lots of colors as options because I am not an artist. I don't know how to um, mix colors to get, you know, other colors very well. So I'd like to have a wider range of colors if possible. So I've got the 100 set and I've been using them, as you can see, and I really like them. I am trying to use them and then I'm going to hopefully at some point, if I feel like or if I can, share with you my thoughts on them, especially in relation to Arbit Juris. I know they're very different products. This is ink based, whereas Arbit Juris are watercolor pencils. So very, very different products. Don't worry. I know that. But um, I wanted to share with you with regards to, you know, favorites. Reason being, I don't think these are as versatile as my Albert Jura pencils. I know they're very specific for what, what you can use them for and how you can use them. I don't like them dry. Um, I love the intensity when you activate them with Albert Jura pencils. It's a watercolor effect. So it sort of dilutes the color and you need to put pencil over the top to get some more intensity or um, paint over the top, things like that. Whereas with Derwent Ink Tense, when you activated with water you don't all, you don't necessarily need to add any more color over the top it's so vibrant that you can just leave the piece the way it is once activated and i love that idea of it but i like it for basing as well i don't like them dry definitely and um i've really enjoyed yeah using them so i think they are a a, a new favorite for 2023 they don't overtake my Albert Durers like I said if I had to pick one set of pencils and just run with them it would be the Albert Dura pencils um so they were those are still my top but it's a nice uh supply to add to my collection something very different that I don't have um which is what's nice about them um and I've done some pages with them which made me realize why I like them so much so for example this is Carolina Kubikowska's Magic Hour um I got this book this year and I did this page with it and I did pretty much everything other than the face um, with the Derwent Ink Tense and other than the leaves. I started with my Albert Dura pencils and then I decided, oh, let me try the Derwent Ink Tense here. And I went with the, did the hair and the cat and the hat and the background was with watercolor paints, um, but everything else other than the leaves in the background are with the um, Derwent Ink Tense. And I didn't go over. So I used them, I activated it with water and I left it at that. And I really liked um, the effect. It's nice and intense, the kind of boldness that I like. I love having bold colors, but that's where also the ink tense is a little bit limited in that you can't get the subtle colors as much with them because yeah, they're very vibrant, they're ink. So once you activate them, they're going to go, they're going to give a massive um, pop to your page basically. Um, but that's what they are and I understand um, what they're what they're used for. So um, yeah, beautiful pencils. Um, the other page I did with them, again, just with the pencils and I didn't put anything over the top was in Hannah Carlson's Witch's Cottage. And hopefully I'll review and give you my full thoughts about the, the pencils, but I used it on this pen, on this page and again, I didn't use it for the skin, not yet confident to do that with Derwin Ink Tense, but I did everything else with Derwin. Oh, and the background. The background is my, I think the background is Neo Color 2's, 
but everything else was with the Derwent Ink Tents and I activated them and I didn't go over the top and they're right nice and intense. You have your shadows, you have your highlights. Um, and so I'm really, really happy with how they work. And I, yeah, I didn't have to go over with a pencil. So it's really nice, gives a brilliant effect without having to do much more. Um, there is a learning curve and I'm still learning. That's just two pages I did with the Derwent Ink Tents fully with, pretty much fully with the Derwent Ink Tents, but I loved the results I got and I like them. I do find that they wear, wear down more than my Albert Durer's though. Um, so I do find that they, the, the pencils wear down a bit more. Um, not sure why, but they do get, um, the sharpness does uh, wear off and you have to sharpen it more often. But um, yeah, I will hopefully do a review on them at some point after I've used them a bit more. Those are just two pages I've used them on. Um, but I like the results and I really enjoyed using them. And I like that it's a different supply to what I have. So even though it's water-based, um, you activate it with water, it stays put on the page once you've activated it, unlike watercolor pencils. Um, so it, it gives me something different to watercolor pencils, even though they look like they're watercolor pencils. They're not. Um, so yeah, a nice supply to add to my collection of supplies. I didn't have something like this. So yeah, Derwent Ink Tents. And if you want to see the colors, I have that here. Um, where is it? This one. There we go. Yeah. So really nice colors, intense colors. So that's with them dry, which I don't, I, I, uh, they're very hard to blend with dry. So I, I don't think I would ever use them dry. I don't think they're meant to be used dry and then um, activated and the intensity just comes in when activated. Whereas with Arbic Juris, it sort of dilutes the color. Yeah. All right. Then I think, is that my last supply now? I think this is my last supply guys. All right. So my last supply is the Karen Dash Pablos. So now I have three sets of pencils. I think that's plenty. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I got the Karen Dash Pablos. I thought about it a lot. I tried some, where are they? Some stock pencils first. I, I asked you guys on Instagram, on YouTube, what you guys thought about the um, Karen Dash pa Pablos. And the reason I went for Karen Dash Pablos is yes, because they are a um i can't find the other pencils but anyways i got like three four green pencils to try out as stock pencils oh yeah i think they're in here i've got some pulled out but anyways um i tried them out as stock pencils the reason i went for them as uh, another option to my arbor jurors was because i like the shape being hexagon because i was used to that with my arbor Jura pencils um i didn't want to ride round pencil so auto so straight away it sort of limited what options i had um so yeah i went for karen dash i like the fact that there were 120 colors again like i said i like the big sets because um yeah i don't have to worry about um trying to mix colors to get certain colors and the reason i also went for the um karen dash pablos is because it does add something to my favorite castell so um if I show you, these are my Albert Durer pencils, okay? Quite bold, quite intense colors. You do have some lighter tones, skin tones, which is really good, but you don't have that many pastel colors, and that's what the Pablos added. Um, so there's a lot of pastel colors that it adds to my Faber Castell um, set. The reason I didn't go for the super color, which is the Pablo version, of the uh, watercolor pencils of the Pablo version. So basically, just like we have Polychromos and Albert Dura pencils, we have Pablos for the Karen Dash brand, we have Pablos and we have Supercolors. So exactly the same range of colors, but the Supercolor are watercolor pencils and the Pablos are not water-based. And I wanted a set of pencils that were not water-based. Um, I wanted something that was, uh, yeah, something that I could just use as pencils. I Again, wanted to just add something to my collection that I didn't have. If I went for super colors, there would be certain things that, you know, certain colors that will sort of sort of be duplicates. Um, you know, there's only so many colors you can get, you know, in the world. Um, but I wanted something that was different. So like I have the Albert Duro colors, which are watercolor pencils. I have the Neo Color 2s, which are 
crayons. I have Derwent Ink Tents, which are ink based, and then Pablo's, which are not water based. So it just gives something different to the pencils I have because I don't have many other pencils. Um, so that's why I went for this. Like a lot of people mentioned that, oh, I'm surprised you didn't go for the super colors. I can always, now that I've tried out the Pablo's and I know what colors there are and what colors are lacking in my Albrecht Juris, I can always get those particular colors in the super color to compensate or to add to using with my Albrecht Jura pencils. So there are certain greens, for example, that we don't have in the, they're very close, but we, there are certain greens that we don't have in the Albrecht Juris. There are certain pinks. I think reds are lacking in the Pablo or the Karen Dash sets. I think the reds we have in Albrecht Juris are brilliant. Um, I like the dark reds we have, but yeah, some of those pastel colors like the mauve, and I really like these blue jeans. This blue jeans color is like a grayish blue and the really pale, it's called bluish pale, but the really pale blue here. Um, so there are colors that I could get as super color stock pencils to, you know, use with my albertures. But I wanted a set that was not water-based. Um, because yeah, a lot of people actually mentioned we're surprised that you went for um pencils that were not water based you could have gone for the super colors which would have, would have been the same you could use them the same as my as your albrecht jurors but i wanted something non-water based so that if for example i did a you know a, 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 i did a coloring a page and i wanted to use distressings after i've done my coloring i can go over and do my distressings and i know these are not going to budge when i use watercolor some watercolor pencils like the albrecht jurors i have to do my distress ink work before I use my Albrecht Jurors because if I do the distress ink work at the end of my coloring it's just going to smudge all that watercolor pencils out because they're water-based so I wanted something that was not water-based um so yeah so I could use watercolor paints and things like that with it without having to think too much and yeah the reason I decided on this was because of the colors yes there are pencils that are missing because I pulled out quite a few for a page I was doing, I don't think I'll actually finish. It was a freebie um, from Rita Berman that, for the Africa one, but I just, I didn't get a chance to finish it. But I, I should just probably put those pencils back in. I'm not going to end up finishing it. But yeah, so my, super, uh, not super color, my Pablos. I really like them and I've done some pages with them. Um, so I can show that to you. So the first one I did was this one in Usiku's Year of Witches. And it was this page here. I like that because they're a new set of pencils, they have certain pencils that are a bit different to the Albrecht Jurors. I came up with a totally different color palette, something I don't normally do. It's very purple, but I really like how it turned out. Um, I did use alcohol markers for basing, so the Uhuhu alcohol markers, Honolulu series. And then I went over with the pablos over the top um and i really really like that and then obviously i use my 2d art paint pens at the end but i really like the colors that i could uh use which i don't have in the albrecht jura set so for example her robe is um very different brands to what i have in the albrecht jurors i wouldn't be able to create that color even with mixing my albrecht jurors um okay that i could probably create with some of the pencils i have but again, it's very pastel tone. Some of the purples I wouldn't be able to create with my arbitrages. So yeah, it was really nice um, using that. And along with the pastel set of um, Ohuhu's, it worked really good. Um, but I still found it easier. I, I wanna try another page in this book. I was going to for winter, I haven't had a chance, but I wanna use my arbitrages on this paper to see how it works. But really enjoyed using my Pablos um, in that page. And then another thing I really, really liked about the Pablos is a lot of the colors match up with the Neo Color 2s, which is the sol water soluble crayons I showed you earlier. And of, of course, also the super color wood, but um, it really works well together. And I think it's in this book, yes, that I did this page. I've shown you guys this page before. I did the background with the Neo Color 2 water soluble. Sorry, guys, that's uh, Joseph Kattenbang's Mythographic Aviary it came out this year beautiful book his his books are just stunning but anyways i did the background with neocolor twos and then i went over with my pablos just to deepen up 
areas that may have watered down a little bit, diluted a little bit and darken up some of the shadow areas because I could sort of match up the colors, which was really nice. And then all these colors here, which are slightly different to the colors I use on for my Albert Durer sets for the leaves are all Pablo's and I loved the effect it gave and I could match it up with the background really well. Um, so I really like the fact that, yes, I had the Neo Color 2s from before and getting the same brand and a range of pencils that I could pretty much match up with the Neo Color 2s really gives um, an additional, you know, um, option to use it in my pages together with the Neo Color 2s to give a really lovely effect. Um, just like I like using my Faber-Castell Arbic Jura pencils with the soft pastels I have, which are Faber-Castell. So I use them for basing and then I can use the pencils over the top, so just like that. Um, so I really love that I can use it together with my Neo Color 2s for such a beautiful effect and the colors are stunning. So yes, I do love these set of pencils. No, it doesn't overtake my Arbic Jura pencils. Um, they're still my number one, but um this year as a new supply for 2023 it definitely made my top 10 yeah so guys that's it i have shared with you my top 10 of 2023 um i have no idea how to add everything here for you guys but there we go so the newer supplies i don't buy that many pencils so these are my actually these are just the three sets of pencils i have i have some black widows i haven't used them for a while i think i should try again maybe with the skills i've sort of developed it might um might actually work for me now so i do have some black widows to try out i don't have the newest set that had come out but um, it might be worth playing around with them again seeing because I know a lot of people like the um, Black Widows, but that's three sets of pencils I have. Albert Duras, Inktense and Pablo's and the remnants of my Black Widows. Um, but, um, and I'm happy. I'm happy with this selection. All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed me sharing with you what my top 10 of 2023 are some are new some are all-time favorites i would love to know what your favorites are it may be supplies that i've not tried yet um as i always tell you i'm very slow to buying stuff i'm very picky and i don't buy that much i i, I like using what i have and um but it'll be nice to see what you guys like so if it is something i want to try out i can in the future or maybe coming into 2024 um, so yeah, share with me what your top favorites of 2023 are, um, even if it's just five or three, let me know. I'd love to know. Um, but I hope you found this interesting. I hope you liked looking at my top 10 and I'll be back with you guys again soon. So until then, take care. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.